And a mass evacuations and yet another swatting call to add to the wave of threats and unease facing public officials across this country. Once again, Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell says he and his family were targeted by a series of threatening voicemails. The Justice Department says a Florida man arrested this week left five messages last month at a congressional office in Washington that we now know to be Swalwell's, with threats that included to, quote, come after you and kill you, and to, quote, come and kill your children. For the second day in a row, state government buildings were evacuated today after receiving bomb threats, this time in multiple buildings across Mississippi, at a courthouse in Little Rock, Arkansas, and a courthouse in Daytona Beach, Florida. And just one day after six state capitol complexes were evacuated and searched after each receiving bomb threats. And the latest victim of another unsettling trend this week, illegal and dangerous swatting calls targeting political figures. Georgia election official Gabriel Sterling says we should refuse to allow this to be our new normal after someone falsely reported to police a shooting incident at his home last night. Joining our conversation, former assistant director for counterintelligence at the FBI, Frank Fogluzzi. David is also back. Frank, this is not stopping. This is just day four of a very busy year in politics, high profile trials, increasingly inflammatory rhetoric from the leading GOP candidate. Is is this what we're going to see? Should we expect more of this? Why are we seeing such a rash of this just in the past few days? The numbers are indeed on the rise. It's not. It's not just uh, you. If you think the numbers are climbing, they they are climbing. The data is there. In fact, the FBI about six months ago opened up a national database through their NCIC system to track specifically SWAT these so-called swatting incidents where someone tries to get the SWAT team to respond to your house because they don't like you, they want to mess with you. Whatever it is, it's that serious that the FBI's got involved here in tracking the numbers, because otherwise the police departments across the country may not connect the dots that, hey, this same number did this today earlier over here. And then you've got very sophisticated technology being misused right now. AI can allow callers to anonymize their voice, change their accent, change their phone number, make it seem like the phone numbers are coming from somewhere else in the country or the world. FBI is getting to the bottom of that now, so that increases the odds that you will get caught doing this. If you're sitting there, cowardly, not liking what someone says and thinking you're going to have fun and mess with them, you're eventually going to get caught and charged. And I will add this, by the way, it's a deadly thing. People have died as a result of swatting incidents. There's, there was a man in Tennessee who had a heart attack uh, because the SWAT team was uh, showing up at his house as the result of a response to a swatting call. And a man in Wichita, Kansas, was actually shot by the responding police officer. He shot the homeowner uh, mistakenly during a SWAT response. With regard to the fact that our society is in a place right now where the thing you think you should do if you disagree with someone politically or their opinion about something is to turn to violence and violent threats, not only are you a coward, but you're really just a sheep that's responding to the Trump MAGA cult call to, to think that everybody who doesn't think like you is evil and that you can do this to them and their family. And there are consequences, as we've learned in the case of Congressman Eric Swalwell. Um, there's nothing patriotic about threatening to kill a U.S. congressman and his kids because you disagree with them. Right. I mean, David Jolly, in a statement last night, Congressman Swalwell said, said much the same, quote, there is no place in America for threats of political violence. We must always resolve our differences at the ballot box. And yet, and yet, David Jolly, this is where we find ourselves. It is. And I think many people can probably easily remember when Gabby Giffords and 18 other people were shot in Tucson for having a congressperson on your corner event. And I think that is the real danger, right? Fortunately, we are talking about a threat to Swalwell and his children. We're not talking about an actual incident. But who knows the next time and the next member of Congress if there is actually an incident. And this is where there is a requirement on our political leaders to de-escalate. They must. And look, Political violence existed before Donald Trump, but Donald Trump in many ways has mainstreamed it. I mean, the entire insurrection on January 6th was about using political violence to stop the peaceful transfer of power. That is a contribution of Trump's leadership to violence in our politics that translates then to our political discourse. And so we always have to be careful of assigning blame to political leaders. But the one thing we know we can do 
is expect them to de-escalate and denounce escalations of violence related to our politics. On one side, you consistently hear that. Democratic leadership consistently tries to de-escalate and denounce the violence, and certainly many in the Republican Party do as well, but not the current leader of the party. He's fine with using intimidation when he sends out names on a social media account. He's fine with that. He's fine with January 6th. And that's where we should expect more of now the front runner to return to the White House in November. You know, Frank, I want to get your reaction to these bomb threats to, to state government buildings today, state capitol complexes yesterday, the second consecutive day in a row. What do you think is happening here? You know, one has to wonder whether there is some organization behind this. It could just be a couple of people uh, who are using, again, technology to anonymize where this is coming from. But it's, it's clearly a response to the political environment. And the targeting of, of state capitals speaks to the, the concerns that people might have that someone's going to be either taken off the ballot, as we've seen with regard to, to Supreme Court buildings around the various states, but also that, that there are d disagreements with regard to how to proceed on certain legislation that's really controversial in various states. And again, instead of engaging and voting or volunteering or writing letters, you call in a bomb threat. So that's where we are now. People sitting back, it's the, it's, it's the, it's the use of technology, the anonymity they think they have, but I, I got to keep hammering this. Consequences will come. You, these people will get caught. They will get arrested. And the federal agencies are now heavily involved in looking at this from a national threat picture. David Jolly, I, I don't know if you saw this in an interview this week. Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold, she talked about the swatting call that her main counterpart received after she decided Trump isn't eligible to appear on the ballot. Griswold said, quote, Trump, quote, knew what he was doing when he posted about her on his social media. I mean, the, the effect here... It is supposed to be chilling, right? There, there is the danger to the individual. There is the danger in institutions. There's also just the hope that someone won't move forward with doing the right thing because they know that yeah. this violence is a possibility. That's right. It's a tactic of intimidation, and it's a dangerous one, as Frank mentioned. And we should say it, it happens on both sides of the aisle. Uh, Senator Rick Scott, I believe, last week was a victim of swatting as well. But as well, what is unique in the situation that you just identified, and I think it is much more relevant, is that Donald Trump often sends out names on social media to people who take action based on that. Again, January 6th was a perfect example, but you can take prosecutors that he identifies on, on Christmas holidays and Thanksgiving holidays and says, these people are enemies, these people are terrible, and I'm going to seek retribution. Well, if you were somebody who was a devout follower of Donald Trump, and particularly someone who might be wrestling with mental health issues, perhaps you act on that. And so in cases that we have seen where there is a correlation between the identification being made public of an individual or the wish for re retribution and revenge against an individual, and it is happening at the fingertips of Donald Trump himself, that is a danger should be, that should be called out. I agree with Frank. Someone on the swatting issue needs to be arrested and go to prison. And that needs to be a, a national story to try to put a stop to some of this. Until there are consequences, I'm afraid it will continue.